Hi, I'm Eva from Aarhus in Denmark, and I'm here together with Elif from Istanbul in Turkey, and Olaf and Stefan from Gothenburg in Sweden. And we are here to present the paper entitled The Coaching Design Space, Exploring the Design Space for Co-located Collaborative Games that Use Multi-Display Composition. It's uh, quite a lot of words in this title, so let's try to go through them. So starting with uh, you, uh, Olaf and Stefan, what is a co-located collaborative game that use multi-display composition? Uh, well, maybe Stefan can explain the collaborative part and then I can say something about co-located multi-display thing later. Sure, uh, the use of collaborative games in this paper is simply games where players have to perform their individual actions so that the combined consequences of those actions are more than the sum of the consequences themselves. That is, the players need to collaborate to affect the games in ways they couldn't if they played uh, ignoring each other. So the collaborative games that have inspired this paper make use of the concept of multi-display composition, which means that several devices can be combined together to form a large display, as you can see in the movie here. We have worked with a concept that we call four in one, where two to four co-located players combine the tablets together to form one shared space where the game plays out. As you can see in the movie here, the players first need to start up the game and arrange the tablets together in the correct order before the actual game starts. And now they're playing the first level of this game called String Force, and now they're done. So in collaboration with our students, we have developed uh, no less than 16 different uh, four-in-one games over several years. The goal behind the design of all the games has been to create a game that stimulates and supports collaboration between the participants playing the game. Thank you. But Stefan, what is the design space? Uh, a design space is a concept used by designers to be able to consider many alternative design possibilities. Uh, simply, the main idea is that each potential design you could do is imagine, imagined as being in one position in a large space. And by having a coordinate system for that space, by having name dimensions for that space, one can consider a huge amount of potential designs and you could easily compare different potential designs or existing designs with each other, simply how they relate to each other uh, in these dimensions. The challenge with using design spaces like this is finding, identifying and naming the dimensions and trying to avoid having dimensions that are depending on each other. Thank you. But Elif, how was the coach design space developed? Well, the short answer is through iterative analysis. Uh, I think the method we used in this paper was one of the strongest aspects because there is no agreement on the definition of a design space. And as Stefan pointed out, it could be used in different ways. So this study serves an example for a mapping method to analyze the design space offered by our four-in-one game instances. So how we develop this design space is by conducting analysis in two levels, in horizontal and vertical grounding. Um, and we inspired by Christina Höck and uh, Jonas Löfgren approach to strong concepts in which uh, horizontal grounding is done with a focus on similarities and differences between concepts. And in vertical grounding, the concept is connected to relevant theories and or other instances. So we adopt this adopted this approach by using the gameplay design pattern collection as a repository of game design elements developed by our uh, Stefan Björk and his colleagues. And these patterns in this collection helped us to frame our analysis by using a common game design language. Um, we collected the data from different channels. First is from the documentation of all of uh, game design students' reports who have contributed to the development of these games. And second, from co-design cool sessions and or play tests that we have conducted um, with children in our previous work and studying the games themselves. 
And for the analysis, uh, we conducted horizontal and vertical analysis, respectively. For horizontal analysis, what we looked at, the sim similarities and differences between all these 16 games based on the developer developers' own analysis of their games and by using the pattern vocabulary. And this helped us to find the cooperation pattern as the most common pattern in these games. In the vertical analysis, we looked into the cooperation pattern thoroughly and listed all the patterns related to cooperation on Wiki and compared this list with the ones pronounced by the developers. So this vertical phase was a bit more complex because we needed to study the pattern descriptions very thoroughly in relation to our games and decide which patterns to include or exclude in the design space. So to understand this space more clearly, I have to invite our audience to visit our paper because we describe this process very much in detail in our methodology. But in sum, the vertical analysis helped us to find the relevant gameplay design patterns to be included in our mapping. Uh, then with the inductive analysis, we grouped the patterns in relative clusters. And for doing so, Olaf, Eva and I first worked individually and compared our interpretations and completed this phase, reiterating the work in several affinity diagrams to calibrate our decisions and maintain an internal consistency. When we reached our consensus, our design space bar was ready for testing. Thank you, Elif. But Olaf, then show us what is the design space? the culture design space. Yeah, the culture design space, as you can see here in the figure, is made up uh, of four different perspectives, where each perspective is then made up of several dimensions to provide further details. So we have these four different perspectives that gives us four different angles or starting points when we want to look into collaborative, collocated games. And um, we can look at more details in the next slide here. So in this slide, you can see the entire design space, more or less. So you can see that it's organized into these four perspectives, game space, social interaction, game components, and aesthetics. And then within each of the perspectives, there are then several different dimensions that build up the design space. So if you look at the social interaction uh, perspective, then we have the dimensions, roles and skills, uh, actions and goals and planning. And the end points in our design space are game design patterns. So in the uh, roles and skills dimension, for instance, we have the game design pattern teams, social skills, avatars and abilities. So finally, why should anyone care about this paper, Olaf? Well, there are several ways to make use of this design space. One is as an analytic tool for analysis of games. So we can take any existing cooperative games and study it using these tools and look at what kind of properties it has in some sort of a nice organized manner. And it can also be used for yes, a generative tool, as, as Stefan would say a few words about. Yes, the different dimensions and the gameplay design patterns point out opportunities, which you can consider as a designer. Should I use this or not? Their perspective lets you focus on different parts of a design, if you want that also. And if you're redesigning, if you have something you can position in this design space, it makes it easy to compare with other things which have been assigned or how you can nudge it in according to some dimension and you can imagine more easily what the consequences would be. And Elif? And to me, the paper could be a good example for a methodological approach to bridge between theory and practice and explore new opportunities for new design spaces. Thank you thank very you. much. And thank you for listening. <laughs> what did I say? Thank you.